me on? Okay. Good evening and welcome to Bueller Mennonite Church as we celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ. For the past four weeks, we have been preparing ourselves for the celebration through lighting of the Advent candle each Sunday. Tonight, we celebrate the birth of our Savior by lighting the Jesus candle. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Join with me as we sing Joy to the World. Good evening. It's wonderful to see you on this special night of Christmas Eve. I'm going to give some of you some animals that you can help use to tell the story. We won't have enough for everybody, but most of you can help out telling our story of this very special night. And if you're in the front, if you'd sit on your bottom so everybody could see, that would be wonderful. Okay. And if we could even dim the lights during this story, it would help them see the star. Okay, this is called Star of Wonder. Do you see the star flashing in the book? Yes, because the wise men and the shepherds followed the star. On a dark and starry December night, much like tonight, many, many years ago, as wise men saw the firelight, three camels, who has a camel? have a camel can you hold your camel up for everybody to see good job three camels look at a dazzling new star and they know to follow no matter how far who do you think they'll find at the end of that star who do you think <coughs> baby Jesus that is right they trust the angels to follow the star the star of promise lights the way over the hills they walk as it rays Although the struggle to stay awake is a journey, they have to make it to see the dear baby Jesus. How about some little dogs? Do we have any little dogs? The star leads onward to Bethlehem where a miracle is awaiting them. Two dogs lead the group toward the light while the valley softly glows by night. Do we have any sheep helpers tonight? Any shepherds? Very good. A lamb looks at the star above and it fills his heart with warmth 
and love. The bright new star appears to say, follow me to find God's way. What town are they going to? Bethlehem. Bethlehem, very good. Oh, we have a donkey. Does anyone have a donkey? There's the donkey. Look, it's getting brighter. The closer they get to baby Jesus, the uh, flashier the star gets. Bethlehem streets are quiet and dark. Not a sound can be heard, just a distant bark. Around the stables, the donkeys are drinking. They gaze at the star, so bright and so twinkling. Animals gather as fast as they're able to find Mary and Joseph together in the stable. Baby Jesus has just been born. Hallelujah. They all say together. Then every heart begins to sing as they prepare to meet the king of the kings. Look, they're all at the stable now, aren't they? As heads bow at this wondrous sight, watched over by the star side flight. Ooh, we're going to have a bright star on here, too. The baby cradled in a manger will forgive our sins and save us all from danger. So they followed the star and they found the baby Jesus. And to remember our story tonight, you may put your animals back in the bag. We're going to give you each a Christmas ornament. And the Christmas ornament, whoops, you can grab one. The Christmas ornaments have the different animals that were in our story. And as soon as you get your Christmas ornament, please go back to where you are waiting before the story. Thank you for listening and have a blessed Christmas. Just take one. Okay, very good. If you get two, you can share with someone else, okay? If you get two, share with someone else. Did you get one? You got one, okay. Merry Christmas. Okay, it's time for announcements. Um, we want all children and young adults through high school to come down in the basement afterwards and pick up a sack of goodies that's prepared for you down there. And so make sure you do that right after the program. Then I'd like to tell you a little bit about the um, Victory Village Christian Academy that our money is going for this evening. They're very close by, only about five and a half miles south and a little bit east of Victory Road, a little bit north, and you're right there. Uh, we were invited there for a special Christmas candle lighting service and had a good time um, with them, learned to know the children that are there. They're age 12, and then graduate from high school there, and uh, they're accredited, so you can uh, go on to college with your high school diploma from there. Um, they take in children who are troubled, or it's all girls, and uh, and work with them and and keep tab of them and enjoy them, visit with them. A lot of them really uh, become uh, a good person in our society. So it's well worth it. If uh, you want more information, there's there's plenty in the hallway where you can can uh, read it there. Also, I'd like to to welcome Bill and Carol Cowell with us this evening. They, have, they are the directors and they've been doing this for many years and we just uh, are glad that they're here too tonight. So uh, keep that in mind as you give to your offering. Thank you.
Let's uh, bow our head and give thanks for your generosity tonight. And also for the generosity of people who serve and bring light into this world that uh, mirror the light we celebrate tonight. Let's together pray for the offering and, and, and dedicate it to God's work. Heavenly Father, we offer you, we offer to you and to your kingdom work this offering that we've taken tonight. And we pray that those that have given so freely will be blessed by you. We also pray that the money become a blessing, that this money bless the work of Victory Village and the many lives that it touches. May it magnif be magnified in your kingdom work. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for light that shines in the darkness. We thank you for servants who work on a daily basis to bring your good news uh, to where it needs to be brought. Lord, bless this offering. Bless the work of Victory Village. Bless the students at Victory Village. And now, bless us in the hearing and in the presentation of this best Christmas pageant ever. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the wonderful Counselor, Christ the Lord. Amen. They lied and stole and smoked cigars, even the girls, and talked dirty and hit little kids and cussed their teachers and took the Lord, name of the Lord in vain and set fire to Elmer Croker's old broken-down tool house. <laughs> they were so all-around awful you could hardly believe that they were real. Ralph, Imogene, Leroy, Claude, Ollie, and Gladys. Six skinny, stringy kids, all alike, except for being different sizes and having different black and blue places where they clonked each other. My mother's friend, Mrs. Redmond, was a social service worker, and she tried to get some welfare money for the Herdmans so Mrs. Herdman could just work one shift and spend more time with her children. But Mrs. Herdman wouldn't do it. She liked the work, she said. It's not the work, Mrs. Redmond told my mother, and it's not the money. It's just that she'd rather be at the shoe factory than shut up at home with that crowd of kids. I can't say I blame her. So the Herdmans pretty much looked after themselves. Mother didn't expect to have anything to do with the Christmas pageant except to make me and my brother Charlie be in it and to make my father go and see it. But then she got stuck with the whole thing when Melanie lost her voice. Now, our Christmas pageant isn't what you'd exactly call four-star entertainment. Melanie losing her voice after all the Wednesday nights was the only unexpected thing that ever happened to it. Melanie ran the Christmas pageant year after year. The, sta the script is standard, the inn, the stable, the shepherds, the star. And so are the costumes, and so is the casting. Primary kids are angels. Intermediate kids are shepherds. Big boys are wise men. The minister's son has been Joseph for as long as I can remember. And Alice Wendelkin was, is Mary because she's so smart, so neat and clean, and most of all, so holy looking. 
All of the rest of us are in the angel choir, lined up according to height because nobody can sing parts. It's always just the children's story, a Christmas story, year after year, with people shuffling around in bathrobes and bed sheets and sharp wings. Well, here's your big chance. Why don't you cancel a pageant and just show movies? Like movies of what? What were you thinking? I don't know. Jason Regeer has five big reels of MCC meat canner. <laughs> what does the meat canner have to do with Christmas? Never mind, I guess you think you're pretty funny. But the Christmas Eve pageant is our tradition and I'm not planning to do anything different. Of course, nobody even thought about the Herdmans in connection with the Christmas pageant. And in the end, it was Charlie's fault that the Herdmans showed up in church. For three days in a row, Leroy Herdman stole the dessert from Charlie's lunchbox. And finally, Charlie just gave up trying to do anything about it. Go ahead and take it. I don't care. I get all the dessert I want in Sunday school. What kind of dessert? Kool-Aid, cookies, and donuts. We get all the treats we want. Of course, that was the wrong thing to tell the Herdmans if you wanted them to stay away. And sure enough, the very next Sunday, there they were, slouching into Sunday school, eyes peeled for refreshments. It was that morning B.J., the Sunday school superintendent, made an announcement. We're going to be starting our Christmas Eve practice uh, very soon. So next Sunday, I want you all to meet at the back of the church and be sure to tell your parents so that uh, they know what we're going to uh, be assigning parts. And we want every boy and every girl to be take, take part in our Christmas Eve program, okay? BJ made this same speech every year, so she didn't get any wild applause. Besides, we all knew what part we were going to play anyway. What's the pageant? It's a play. Yeah, but what's the play about? It's about Jesus. Everything here is. So I figured Imogene didn't care much about the Christmas pageant, but I was wrong. The next Sunday, we all filed into the back pews along with a few Sunday school teachers who were supposed to keep everyone quiet. Now, this isn't going to take us very long. First, I'm going to tell you about rehearsals. We'll have our rehearsals every Wednesday at 6.30. We're only going to have five rehearsals, so you must all try to be here for every one. Now, you children that are in preschool and the younger grades, you'll get to be the angels. And the older boys and girls will be shepherds and guests at the inn and members of the choir. Now, we'll need Mary and Joseph, the three wise men and the angel of the Lord. They aren't hard parts, but they are very important parts. So those people must come to every rehearsal. Now, we all know what kind of person Mary was. She was quiet and gentle and kind. And the person who plays Mary must try to be that kind of person. I know that many of you would like to be Mary, but of course we can only have one Mary. So I'll ask for volunteers and then we will all decide together who should get to be Mary. Well, that was pretty safe to say since the only person who ever raised her hand was Alice Wendelkin. 
But Alice just sat there looking down at the floor, and the only person who raised her hand this time was Imogene Herdman. Do you have a question, Imogene? No, I want to be Mary, and Ralph wants to be Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> well, we do want to be sure that everyone has a chance. Does anyone else want to volunteer to be Joseph? No one did. No one ever did. All right. Ralph will be our Joseph. Now, does anyone else want to volunteer to be Mary? Mm, Cassidy? Kinley? Alice, don't you want to volunteer this year? No, I don't want to. Nobody volunteered to be wise men either except Leroy, Claude, and Ollie Herdman. So there was Mother stuck with a Christmas pageant full of Herdmans in the main roles. There was only one Herdman left over and one main role left over, so you don't have to be very smart to figure out that Gladys was going to be the angel of the Lord. What do I have to do? Well, the angel of the Lord is the one who brought the good news to the shepherds. Now right away, the, all the shepherds began wiggling around in their seats, figuring that the only good news Gladys brought them would come with a smack in the teeth. Charlie's friend Drew Ballard raised his hand and said, I can't be a shepherd, we're going to Cleveland. <laughs> Why didn't you say something before? I forgot. My mother doesn't want me to be a shepherd. Why not? I don't know, she just said don't be a shepherd. <laughs> One kid was honest. Gladys Herman hits too hard. Gladys isn't going to hit anybody. The angel just visits the shepherds in the field and tells them that Jesus is born. And hits them. Well, of course he was right. You could just picture Gladys whamming shepherds left and right. But Mother said that was perfectly ridiculous. I don't want to hear another word about it. None of the shepherds may quit. The first pageant rehearsal was usually about as much fun as a three-hour ride on the school bus and just as noisy and crowded. The rehearsal, though, was different. Everybody shut up and settled down right away for fear of missing something awful that the Herdmans might do. Okay, let's have all the angels come sit in the front row and the shepherds move in behind them on the second row. Who are the shepherds? Where do they come from? What's an inn? It's like a motel where people go to spend the night. What people? Jesus? Oh, honestly. Jesus wasn't even born yet. Mary and Joseph went there. Why? What happened first? Begin at the beginning. Oh. Well, that really scared us because the beginning would be the book of Genesis where it says, in the beginning. <laughs> and if we were going to have to start with the book of Genesis, we'd never get through. The thing was, the Herdmans didn't know anything about the Christmas story. They knew that Christmas was Jesus' birthday, but everything else was news to them. The shepherds, the wise men, the star, the stable, and the crowded inn. They never went to church during their whole life till your brother told them we'd get refreshments. And all you ever hear about Christmas in school is how to make ornaments out of aluminum foil. So how would they know about the Christmas story? Mother said she had better begin by reading the Christmas story from the Bible. This was a pain in the neck to most of us because we knew the whole thing backward and forward and never had to be told anything except who we were supposed to be and where we were supposed to stand. And so it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. 
And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Pregnant! Well, that stirred things up. All the big kids began to giggle, and all the little kids wanted to know what was so funny. That's enough, Ralph. I don't think it's very nice to say Mary was pregnant. I agreed with her. It sounded too ordinary. Anybody could be pregnant. Great with child sounded better for Mary. Shh, I want to hear. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Not even for Jesus? Well, now, nobody knew the baby was going to be turned out to be Jesus. You said Mary knew. Why didn't she tell them? I would have told them. Boy, I would have told them. What was wrong with Joseph that he didn't tell them? Her pregnant and everything. What was that they laid the baby in? The manger? Is that like some kind of bed? Why would they have a bed in a barn? Well, that's just the point. They didn't have a bed in the barn. So Mary and Joseph just had to use whatever was there. What would you do if you had a new baby at your house and no bed to put the baby in? We put Gladys in a dresser drawer. <laughs> well, there you are. You didn't have a bed for Gladys, and so you had to use something else. What were the wadded up clothes? The what? You read about it. She wrapped him in wadded up clothes. Swaddling clothes. Long ago, people used to wrap their babies very tightly in big pieces of fabric so they couldn't move around. It made the babies feel cozy and comfortable. So you mean to say that they tied him up and put him in a feed box? Where was the child welfare? <laughs> and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and... Shazam! What? Mother never read Amazing Comics. Out of the black of night with horrible vengeance, the mighty marvel. I don't know what you're talking about, Gladys. This is the angel of the Lord who comes to the shepherds in the fields and... Out of nowhere, right in the black of night, right? Well, in a way. So Gladys sat back down looking very satisfied as if this were at least one part of the Christmas story that made sense to her. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, That's you, uh, Leroy, Claude, and Ollie, so pay attention. What does it mean, wise men? Were they like school teachers? No, dumbbell. It means like the President of the United States. Well, that's actually very close, Claude. They were kings. Maybe they'll tell the innkeeper where to get off and get the baby out of the barn. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him, and presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. What's that stuff? Precious oils and fragrant resins. Oil? What kind of cheap king hands out oil as a present? You get better presents from the firemen. Then we came to King Herod, and the herdmen's never heard of him either. So Mother had to explain that it was Herod who told the wise men, if you find the baby, come back and tell me. Was it him who was it him who sent the Was it him who sent the crummy present? Mother said it was worse than that. He planned to have the baby Jesus put to death. He just got born and already they're out to kill him? The Herdmans were really interested in Herod, and I figured they liked him. He was so mean, he could have been their ancestor. 
Herod Herdman. So who's going to be Herod in this play? We don't show Herod in the pageant. They all go mad. They wanted somebody to be Herod so they could beat up on him. I couldn't understand the Herdmans. You would have thought the Christmas story came right out of the FBI files. They got so involved in it, wanted a bloody end to Herod, worried about Mary having her baby in a barn, and called the wise men a bunch of dirty spies. They left the first rehearsal arguing about whether Joseph should have set fire to the inn or just chased the innkeeper into the next county.
This is going to be our dress rehearsal. The main point of a dress rehearsal is to go right straight through without stopping. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to sit right here just like we're doing it for the whole congregation and I'm going to be the audience. But it didn't work out that way. The angels came in at the wrong place and had to go back out again. And a whole gang of shepherds didn't come in at all for fear of Gladys. Ima Jean couldn't find the baby Jesus doll, so she wrapped up, wrapped up a great big memorial flower urn in a blanket and then dropped it on Ralph's foot. The, and half the angel choir sang Away in a Manger, while the other half sang O Little Town of Bethlehem. So we had to start over. A lot. I've got the baby here. Don't touch him. I named him Jesus. No, 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 no. No, Imogene, you know you're not supposed to say anything. Nobody says anything in the pageant except for the angel of the Lord and the choir singing carols. Mary and Joseph and the wise men just make a lovely picture for us all to look at while we think about Christmas and what it means. Now, we'll start again and we'll go right straight through. I think I should tell them what his name is. No, remember, it wasn't Mary who named the baby. I told you I named him. Joseph didn't name the baby either. God sent an angel to tell Mary what his name should be. What angel was that? Was it Gladys? No, Gladys is the angel who comes to the shepherds with the news. Hey, until a child is born. Unto me, not them, me. I'm the one who had the baby. No, no, no. That just means that Jesus belongs to everybody. Unto all of us a child is born. Now, let's start again. And? Why didn't they let Mary name her own baby? What did that angel do? Just walk up and say, name him Jesus. Yes. <laughs> but... Alice Wendelkin had to open her big mouth. I know what the angel said. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Jesus the Savior, Christ the Lord. Good grief. He'd never get out of the first grade if he had to write all that. <laughs> By this time, everyone was hot and tired. And most of the baby angels had to go to the bathroom. Let's take a five-minute break. The five-minute break was a big mistake because it stretched into 15 minutes, and I'm a Jean spent the whole time smoking cigars in one of the Johns in the ladies' room. Then, Mrs. McCarthy went up to the ladies' room and opened the door and smelled something funny and saw some smoke and she ran right to the church office and called the fire department. Oh my! Oh my! Oh my!
were singing away in the manger when we heard the fire engine pulling up on the lawn of the church with the siren blaring and the red lights flashing. The firemen hurried in and made us all go outside and they dragged a big hose in the front door and went looking for a fire to put out. The street was full of baby angels crying and the shepherds climbing all over the fire truck and firemen and the ladies on the potluck committee and neighbors who came to see what was going on and Reverend Wilmer who ran over from the parsonage in his pajamas and his woolly bathrobe. <laughs> What in the world? It's my day off. I cannot make heads or tails of it. They told me that they lit the bathroom on fire or the kitchen's on fire, and then they told me Imogene is throwing a pot at Ralph. What is going on here? I think, don't you think, we should maybe cancel this pageant? Certainly not. This is going to be the best Christmas pageant ever. Uh, <laughs> maybe so, but I fear... There won't be anyone here to see it. Pastor Wilmer was wrong. Everybody came to see what the Herdmans would do. On the night of the pageant, nothing seemed very different at first. There was the usual chaos all over the place, baby angels getting poked in the eye by other baby angels' wings and grumpy shepherds stumbling over their bathrobes. The spotlight swooped back and forth and up and down until it nearly made you sick at your stomach to look at it. And as usual, whoever was playing the piano pitched away in a manger so high that we could hardly hear it, let alone sing to it. But everything settled down, and at 7.30, the pageant began. We sang, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and then we were supposed to hum some more, O Little Town of Bethlehem, while Mary and Joseph came in from a side door. Only they didn't come in right away. So we hummed and hummed and hummed, which is boring and also very hard, and before very long doesn't sound like any song at all, more like an old refrigerator. I guess we would have gone on humming till we all turned blue, but we didn't have to. Ralph and Imogene were there, all right, only for once they didn't come through the door pushing each other out of the way. They just stood there for a minute as if they weren't sure they were in the right place. They looked like people you see on the six o'clock news, refugees sent to wait in some strange, ugly place with all their boxes and sacks around them. It suddenly occurred to me that this was just the way it must have been for the real Holy Family, stuck away in a barn by people who didn't much care what happened to them. They couldn't have been very neat and tidy either, but more like this Mary and Joseph. Imogene's veil was cockeyed as usual, and Ralph's hair stuck out all around his ears. Imogene had the baby doll, but she wasn't carrying it the way she was supposed to, cradled in her arms. She had it slung up over her shoulder, and before she put it in the manger, she thumped it twice on the back. 
I don't think it's very nice to burp the baby Jesus as if he had colic. Do you suppose he could have had colic? I didn't know why not. He could have had colic or been fussy or hungry like any other baby. After all, that was the whole point of Jesus. He didn't come down on a cloud like something out of amazing comics, but he was born and lived a real person. Right away we had to sing while shepherds watch their flocks by night and we had to sing very loud because there were more shepherds than there were anything else and they made so much noise banging their crooks around like a lot of hockey sticks next came Gladys from behind the angel choir pushing people out of the way and stepping on everyone's feet since Gladys was the only one in the pageant who had anything to say she made the most of it Hey, Auntie, a child is born. She hollered it as if it was the best news in the world. And all the trepperds trembled, sore afraid. Of Gladys, mainly. But it looked good anyway. As We Three Kings of Orient Are was being sung, everybody in the audience turned around to watch the wise men march up the aisle. What have they got? I didn't know, but whatever it was, it was heavy. Leroy almost dropped it. He didn't have his frankincense jar either, and Claude and Ollie didn't have anything, although they were supposed to bring the gold and the myrrh. I knew this would happen. I bet it's something awful. It was a ham. <laughs> and right away, I knew where it came from. My father was on the church charitable works committee. They gave away food baskets at Christmas, and this was the Herdman's food basket ham. It still had the ribbon around it saying, Merry Christmas. I bet they stole it. They didn't, and if they wanted to give away their own ham, I guess they can do it. But even the Herdmans didn't like ham, and even if the Herdmans didn't like ham, they had never before in their lives given away anything except lumps on the head. So you had to be impressed. Leroy dropped the ham in front of the manger. It looked funny to see a ham there instead of fancy bath salts jars we always use for myrrh and frankincense. And then they went and sat down in the only space that was left. Shepherds go. 
While we sang, What Child Is This?, the wise men were supposed to confer among themselves and then leave by a different door so everyone would understand that they were going home another way. But the herdmen forgot or didn't want to or something because they didn't confer and they didn't leave either. They just sat there and there wasn't a thing that anyone could do about it. They're ruining the whole thing. But they weren't. As a matter of fact, it made perfect sense for the wise men to sit down and rest. They were supposed to have come a long way. You wouldn't expect them just to show up, hand over the ham, and leave. As for ruining the whole thing, it seemed to me that the herdmans had improved the pageant a lot just by doing what came naturally, like burping the baby, for instance, or thinking a ham would make a better present than a lot of perfumed oil. Usually by the time we got to Silent Night, which was always the last carol, I was fed up with the whole thing and couldn't wait for it to be over. But I didn't feel that way this time. I almost wished for the pageant to go on with the herdmen's in charge to see what else they would do that was different. I was so busy planning a new way to save the baby Jesus that I missed the beginning of Silent Night. When we got to Son of God Loves Pure Light, I happened to look at Imogene, and I almost dropped my hymn book on a baby angel. Everybody had been waiting all this time for the herdmans to do something absolutely unexpected. And sure enough, that's what happened. Imogene Herdman was crying. In the candlelight, her face was all shiny with tears, and she didn't even bother to try wiping them away. She just sat there awful old Imogene in her crookedy old veil, crying and crying and crying. Could you believe that Imogene Herdman and all the rest of the kids? This was the best Christmas pageant we've ever had, and I'm not sure why, but I think it was them. Could it be? The pageant is always a highlight of the year for me. I guess it's the children and the can carols and all. But you're right, this was the best, and it should have been the worst. There was just something different. Well, the angel of the Lord was different. Yes, but you know, I like that. Had lots of spirits. Sometimes you can't even hear the angel of the Lord. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, had a black eye. That was something special, but only what you might expect. She meant that it was the most natural thing in the world for a herdman to have a black eye. But actually, nobody hit Imogene, and she didn't hit anyone else. Her eye wasn't really black either, just all puffy and swollen. She had walked into the corner of the choir robe cabinet in a kind of daze, as if she had just caught on to the idea of God and the wonder of Christmas. And this was the funny thing about it all. For years, I thought about the wonder of Christmas and the mystery of Jesus' birth and never really understood it. But now, because of the herdmans, it didn't seem so mysterious after all. When Imogene had asked me what the pageant was about, I told her it was about Jesus, but that was just part of it. It was about a new baby and his mother and father who were in a lot of trouble. No money, no place to go, no doctor nobody they knew and then arriving from the east like my uncle from Pennsylvania some rich friends but Imogene I guess didn't see it that way Christmas just came over her all at once like a case of chills and fever and so she was crying and walking into the furniture
Afterward, there were candy canes for everyone and a poinsettia plant for my mother from the whole Sunday school. We put the costumes away and folded up the collapsible manger, and just before we left, my father snuffed out the last of the tall white candles. Well, that's everything. It's all over. It was quite a pageant. What's that you've got? It's the ham. They wouldn't take it back. They wouldn't take any of the candy either or the ornaments. But Imogen did ask me for a set of Bible pictures, and she took the picture of Mary. She said it was just right, whatever that means. I think it meant that no matter how she herself was, Imogene liked the idea of the Mary in the picture, all pink and white and pure looking, as if she never washed the dishes or cooked supper or did anything at all except have Jesus on Christmas Eve. But as far as I'm concerned, Mary is always going to look a lot like Imogene Herdman, sort of nervous and bewildered, but ready to clobber anyone who laid a hand on her baby. And the wise men are always going to be Leroy and his brothers bearing ham. When we came out of the church that night, it was cold and clear with crunchy snow underfoot and bright clear stars overhead. And I thought about the angel of the Lord, Gladys, with her skinny legs and her dirty sneakers sticking out from under her robe, yelling at all of us everywhere. Hey, until a child is born. Unto us a child is born. The line that struck me tonight was, for Imogene, Christmas came over her all at once. What if that happened to us? My blessing to you is this, that Christmas might come over you all at once. And like the Herdmans, that old story that we could probably all tell by memory, might actually be new. And most of all, that light that shines in the darkness might illumine our way for the year to come. What is it about light? It can be plenty dark, but when the light shines, there's nothing that can suppress it. The darkness can't suppress it. The light takes over. We're going to make the light shine. I want to practice a little saying that was often said in the early church where the, the pastor would call out, the light shines in the darkness, and the people would respond, but the darkness cannot put it out. So I will say the light shines in the darkness, and you will say, but the darkness cannot put it out. People, the light shines in the darkness. The darkness cannot put it out. We're going to revisit that. But now we're going to light the candles, and if the senior high would come forward that uh, we're helping with lighting the candles, uh, we're going to take turns to light it. The choir will sing. It's a time for you to think about what it means, light being illumined, Christmas coming over you all at once. And what does it mean when all of our lights together illumine a place, a world, a community?
Each of us has an individual light. I invite you now to look around. What does it look like when we all allow our light to shine together? And we become the peace and the goodwill towards all people. Let's raise our candles as a token of what our calling is as a people of light. Folks, the light shines in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. Go as a people of light. Celebrate with your families. Reach out to your neighbors and the people across the way, the herdmans. Go in peace. Amen.